Oh, these things like to fly. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. What's going on guys? I'm Isaac. I'm John. And today we are building a 420 with a stage two kit from gopowersports.com. That is going to include dual valve springs, about 65 pound springs, a billet rod, a billet flywheel, and a 275 cam. Should make a bunch of horsepower. We've been meaning to do this build for months. This engine was originally bought for the Back to the Future cart. It didn't fit. Not even close. We ended up going with a sweet 20 horsepower 212. Uh, but golf carts just got legalized in our town for road use. Why not? So, yeah. So we, we need a good, strong power plant. We're going to totally make them rethink legalizing golf carts on the streets. So as you can see, this engine's never even been fired. Still got all the stickers on it. But we're just getting right into it. We're also going to be replacing the header or the muffler with a Go Power Sports header and the air filter here. Have these two lines that run through the air box. Hey man, how much oil do you think is in here? I'm gonna say just enough for it to be annoying when we take the cover off. Whoa. I ripped the gasket. Did you? I did. There is a balance shaft. Are you serious? Yeah. I did not know about that. So now that we have the side cover off, you can see the inside of this engine. We have the camshaft here, we have the balance shaft, and we have the gears on the crankshaft controlling those two. Uh, we are gonna pull this balance shaft out because we don't need it. Um, it will make the engine run smoother, which some of y'all might wanna keep it in, but we're gonna be turning this thing some RPMs, so we would like to go without the... More rotating mass. Thank you. We want less rotating mass. So we're also gonna get rid of the low oil cutoff. Now be sure that when you're ordering performance parts, you match whatever kit you get with your engine. So we have the Hemi version of the Stage 2 kit, and this is a Hemi head engine. And the part number on this is 60349. And uh, there's a little bit different head design. This Hemi version has six bolts, whereas the non-Hemi version has just one bolt in the center of the valve cover. Shall we pull out the cam? Yes, sir. And we're losing our losing lifters. Lifters. And the push rods. Now I'm gonna keep track of these. This one's there. And this one's gonna be there. There and there. While Ike's removing the low oil cutoff sensor, I'm gonna go ahead and take the front engine cover off so we can get to the flywheel. Probably six 10 millimeter bolts if I had to guess. Just a guess. There's the engine cover. Hold it. Perfect. The nut to get the flywheel and the fan off. And there's the factory flywheel. And it's cast iron. Goodness. Ooh. thing is heavy. So we have the factory cast iron flywheel on the left here and the aftermarket billet aluminum flywheel on the right. There's a huge difference in weight here, way more than like with the difference between a 212 uh, factory and billet flywheel. Um, and this is going to free up some horsepower for us. But uh, one thing with this flywheel, there's no spot to mount a ring gear and there are also no charging coils. So we're going to need to get rid of our electric start uh, and our charging coils on the engine side of things and it's only going to be a pull start engine from here on out. We need to run out to Ike's work to grab some tools to get the balance shaft bearing out of the block because we're not having any luck right now. Anyway, 
basically we're out of time tonight, so we'll see you all in a second. All right, so we are back with the Stage 2 420 Predator engine build. We had to make a run to the parts store to get a slide hammer. Not ideal, but it's what we were able to get our hands on. It's not really a slide hammer. Oh, it's not? It's a dent puller. It's a dent puller. They didn't have any slide hammers. So, so we're, we're, gonna, gonna, we're gonna give that a shot. It's gonna be fine in other words, right? Absolutely. I'm gonna pull the rod loose from the crankshaft and I'm gonna pull the crankshaft out because I don't want any slag on the crankshaft. Yes. So here's what we're gonna do with the dent puller. We went and got some nuts that thread onto the end of the dent puller. Uh, it fits perfectly in the bearing, which is awesome. Uh, we're gonna stick it in there, we're gonna weld it, and then we are gonna thread the dent puller on and then hopefully pull it off. Uh, but in order to weld that nut in there, we need to take the crankshaft out, the rod out, uh, and make sure we cover everything, make sure we don't get any slag anywhere inside the engine. 10 millimeter on the rods, yep. and they're actually not that tight from the factory. They're tight, but they're not as tight as, as I expect. thought they were gonna be. Yeah. Man, like it was never run. Maybe we ought to go ahead and take the rod out. Yeah, because it's gotta go anyway. Yeah. You know what? Let's take out this spark plug. Oh, wow, they put that one in there, dude. Pretty tight. How does it look? How's it running, man? Making sure I didn't crack the thing. Good. Yeah, you can tell it's been run. I don't know how long they run these things. Not long. Now this will be a interesting if I can pull this off. We've done it before on other engines, but to lots of times you have to pull the head off to replace the rod. That's we're, probably what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do it, but we're gonna we're gonna try to cheat. I like to pull the piston down far enough to get to the uh, pin, and I like to remove the clip, pull out the pin, and remove the rod. There it is. Boom. Bam. Bam. Look at that. Nice. Slick or what, dude? Yeah, man. All we need to do is get the new one in. Oh, we're also doing a governor delete. So we'll uh, just put the grinder up there and grind that arm. Might as well. All right, watch yourself. It's going to be kicking out, yep. I believe. So now we're gonna catch the rag on fire by welding. Yep. All right, so the idea is we're gonna weld the nut onto that bearing, and then with this weight, we should be able to use it to pop out the bearing. Let's give it a shot. Cover. Yep. Cool. Wouldn't recommend doing that at home, right? So we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Before we install the rod, we need to knock out another one of these balance shaft bearings. We're gonna do the same thing, weld the nut, knock it out with the dent puller. That wasn't too bad. We're gonna go ahead and take the governor wheel out too. Oh, these things like to fly. Where is it? There it is. And just like the 212s, this also has the annoying little clip at the base of the shaft. Yeah. And that uh, is annoying. Yeah, and there's there's ways, other ways of doing this. You can hammer out from the back side, push the pin out, and then you tap and put a bolt in. But I don't want to put a bolt in from the inside because then it can back out and bounce around. Oh, there it is. Got the clip. Yep. Should be able to pull right off. And there should be like two washers, I think. One or two? I'm going to say two. Kind of looks like two from here. Yeah, it did, but one? Anyway, getting rid of all that stuff. So the bearing is out and the governor gear is out, and 
the gasket has been scraped clean and we made sure that the inside of this cover is pristine as well as the inside of the engine just so we make sure we don't have any debris going along with the oil. All right, dude. We got some assembly lube. Pulling out the run. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, dude, you did it a second ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's all right. Head's coming off? I don't know. We'll see. Clip. All right, let's see if I can do this. One thing I like about these is the very end of this is tapered. Don't they say those uh, piston rings are sharp? Yes. So be careful. You can, you can uh, cut, your, cut yourself with them. All right. There it is, man. The correct way of doing this is removing the head. So these are the rod bearings. They are actually inserts that are supposed to go in with the rod and cap. And they have little holes which are supposed to help with the uh, oiling. There's a little scoop on the end of the rod cap. When it rotates, it scoops up the oil, shoots it up a little hole, comes through here, and oils up the crankshaft. Is it a journal? Probably the journal, yeah. I know the, the mains, yeah, it's a journal. That's how they oil themselves up, by scooping up the oil that's in the base of the engine. Now, with this bearing installed, we are gonna now add some assembly lube. And you don't wanna put the assembly lube underneath no, the no, you want to put it just on top on the contact surface right right there. So now that we checked it with the plastic gauge and everything's a okay, we added the assembly lube. Now I'm going to install the crankshaft. Bam. So now that this cap is installed, we have to tighten up the rod bolts as specified in the directions. It's four steps. It's 16, 20, 24, then 26 foot-pounds. But follow the directions. Other rods might have different specifications, so always go to this. So Ike has been kind enough to let me torque the rod bolts on this engine build. Uh, we need to start with 16 foot-pounds, which equals about 192 inch-pounds. There's 24, now just two more. There's 26, and I'm just gonna double check. And they say in the instructions it's better to go a little tighter than a little looser. So we torqued it once, we gotta take it back down to 16 foot-pounds, and then torque it again, check with the plastic gauge, etc. Follow the instructions. Rod's done, we're gonna go ahead and install the dual valve springs. Pretty cool looking. Yeah. Have we ever done a 420 before? We have not. Never have. Nice. It might be the first time we've had a valve cover off of one. I think so, because I don't remember this. Yeah. So you start by pulling the caps off. The easiest thing to do would be to take the head off and do this. Yes. Is but that we're, what we're going to do? We're going to try it. No. no <laughs> we're going to try doing it without removing the head. Okay. Thing is tight. All right. I bet you there could be a special tool. But I bet we don't have one. No, of course not. So we were able to get the factory valve spring out. Ike just took a pair of pliers and pressed up against the Thingy valve spring keep, hat, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and I grabbed a magnet and was able to fish out the uh, little keepers. It's gonna be a two-man job getting this back in. The uh, dual valve Ooh. spring, the heavy-duty ones. 
It's a two-man so, job getting it out. Yes. It might be a pull of the head to get back together. Yes. Yeah. So I will set this camera up, and uh, we'll give it a shot. I don't remember what the weight is on these guys, but even the stock springs are very stiff, and the aftermarket ones are just... You can't. There are two of them. Dual springs. So this just isn't going to happen, even with two people. No, I'm, I'm sure there's a special tool for this job, which we don't have. Do your research and make sure you have all the tools that you need for this job. We don't have the special tool here, so we're going to use an automotive tool, which will require us to remove the head. All right, so because we need to run out and grab a special tool to compress the new valve springs, we're just gonna call the video here. One thing we did not realize is this is definitely a more in-depth install than a Stage 2 kit on a Predator 212. I still think a novice could do it, but it'll just take you more time. Um, and so, like I said, we're calling the video here just because we don't want to overwhelm a lot of people with a 30 minute video. But next time we are gonna get it running. These big 420s sound really, really good with a big cam in them, so I can't wait to hear it fire up. Be sure to check out the Stage 2 420 kit from gopowersports.com at our links in the description. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video today and subscribe for more awesome content from Cars and Cameras. Help support us in what we do by picking up a hoodie, sticker, hat, or t-shirt from cars-cameras.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.